In this lecture, we're going to talk about computer hardware. Um, the first thing I want you to understand about computer hardware is that anything you can physically touch on a computer is considered hardware. And all of our hardware devices are broken up into um, really one of three categories. Um, input devices, output devices, or storage. To start off with, we're going to talk about our input devices. And the two most common input devices that um, you see on a computer is going to be your keyboard and mouse. And they are typically used to input information into the computer. Um, but in addition to a keyboard and a mouse, we have other types of um, input devices to explore and actually some options to explore with keyboards and mouse. Um, typically, today, all of our keyboards are pretty standard, but believe it or not, um, the keyboard that you see standard on most typewriters and computers is not the only keyboard available. It's what we call a QWERTY keyboard, um, named after the first six letters in the first row there. But there are also other types of keyboards dealing with where the uh, letters are placed um, that are out there. But today the standard is a QWERTY. Um, your mouse is a pointing device that manipulates an actual pointer on the screen. And there are actually uh, several choices to choose from for a mouse, but typically they all look the same, um, like the image you see here. Um, today's mice typically have a scroll wheel in the middle at, a le at the very least, and then a left and a right mouse button. Um, a mechanical mouse is the typical, the older style, that actually has a mouse ball underneath the actual mouse itself and it rolls um, and based on the movement it then constr controls the position of the pointer. Um, today's standard is actually an optical mouse. Um, it uses an LED light and a computer chip and it works very well on just about any surface except one that has a reflection on it. Along those same lines we also have what we call a laser mouse and those are it's a very high degree of accuracy and it uses a laser in very much the same way as an um, optical mouse does. In addition to that we have other types of pointing devices. As you see here um, some laptops will have a pointing stick that's found in the middle of the keyboard and it kind of functions as like a little mini joystick. Um, most of our laptops today come standard with a touch pad where you would use your finger and actually move your finger over a surface um, to, to control the mouse. Something that's becoming a little out of date is a trackball. Think of it as an, an upside down mouse and, and it stays stationary and on the top you have a little ball that you move. You actually will see a trackball today on some cell, um, cell phones. And then finally we have a joystick. We typically think of joysticks as being something associated with video games, but in some computer systems um, it may be controlling a robot or an electronical piece of equipment. Um, it is also considered an input device. Um, other types of input devices, um, touch screen. You may go to an ATM machine where you actually interact with the computer touching your screen there. Um, some of our new handheld computers or cell phones actually have touch screen technology. Um, along those same lines, a scanner, whether you're scanning in a picture or you're at a um, supermarket that uses a barcode scanner, those are all considered input devices, as is the, com um, the microphone that I'm using to record this lecture. That is also a form of input device. Um, your display devices, those are considered to be output devices. And um, in a computer, your monitor is considered the main um, output device. Um, the other output device would actually be a printer, and we'll talk about those in a second. Um, when you're looking at a computer display, um, there are two components you need to be concerned about. One is the graphics card and the other is the type of monitor or screen you're dealing with. Um, today we have typically one of three possible technologies to choose from for a, for a monitor and that is a CRT, um, an LCD screen, and a plasma. A CRT, that's the big bulky monitors that you are seeing um, becoming obsolete. They are very bulky, they're big, um, you typically would be hard-pressed to find them being sold today with a new computer. 
As a matter of fact, um, there is an issue, and in your textbook, you can. There's a talking points discussing this. Um, there's becoming an issue with monitors being the CRT monitors being put into landfills. They're full of mercury and lead, and they're actually considered hazardous waste. You can't just dump them at a landfill. They have to be disposed of in a special way. And so they have some issues. Um, they the resolution on them is not as good as the other choices. So today it's not just that they're big and bulky, um, they are becoming very obsolete. An LCD screen that's a liquid crystal display, otherwise known as a flat panel. Um, it uses it creates the image by manipulating light um, between two layers of crystal cells. Um, the advantages of having an LCD is that the quality of the screen is it's much clearer. It doesn't have the radiation issues that the old bulky CRTs have, and they're smaller, and they fit on a desk better. So that's some of the advantages of an LCD. Something that's also becoming um, a part of uh, our monitor choices is a plasma screen. This is really nothing more than an HD TV. Um, typically, you see these in a, large, a larger format. Um, you may go to a building where they have one of these mounted on the wall with information being posted. But it creates the, the image on the screen by illuminating um, fluorescent lights in a panel, They're much like a television. Um, these are very expensive, um, and they're used typically when you need to have a larger screen in a large venue type situation. When you um, pick a graphics card, um, a graphics card is going to contain its own processing unit and its own memory. And if you have an actual graphics card um, that is separate from the motherboard, um, your machine's actually going to run faster. And that is because the memory that runs your programs, your RAM, is not having to be used for graphics. It, the graphics card contains specialized memory for your um, video. Most of your packaged computer systems today don't, do not come with a graphics card. It, they actually, it's built into the motherboard and it shares that RAM. So that's a, that's a question to ask when you are looking at a computer. Um, does the actual graphics card have its own memory there or does it share it with your RAM? Um, the graphics card, this actually controls the resolution of your screen. That is actually, by definition, the maximum number of pixels. And a pixel is, one, think of it as one dot on the screen. Um, when you have your screen resolution, the standard is today is typically 1024 by 768. Um, however, a lot of people will still run 800 by 600. And what that means, there are 800 dots going across the screen versus 1024 going across the screen. Um, the higher the number, the better quality of the image you're going to get. 